so good to see everybody this morning. You'd be hard pressed to find a better place to be than in God's house on a Sunday morning. I can tell you that the flesh is weak, and if you try to go about your week, your month, your year without being in God's house, you'll find yourself in struggles. But if you find yourself in God's house on a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning, you'll find strength to carry you through the week, through your month. So you are in a good place this morning, I can tell you. Amen. If you're able to, why don't you stand with me? Stand to your feet if you're able. We're just going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to ask Him to open our hearts, open our minds, and to just move in His place however He wants to move. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house on this Sunday morning, God. So many things that would try to draw our attention away from you, God, but we are here ready to worship you and serve you and lift up your mighty name, God. God, we are excited to see how you move in this service. God, open our hearts and our minds, God. Let, let there be a worshiping spirit arise in this place, God. Let there be a spirit of praise and a spirit of unity. Rise up in this place, God. Move how you intend to move, God. You know what people have need of. God, we're asking you meet every need this morning before, before someone leaves this building. God, let them receive what they're needing from you. We love you and we thank you and we are excited for what you're going to do in this place. In Jesus' name we pray and let the church say amen. Worship with us this morning. Well, I heard an old, old story of how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch life. of my sins and I want the victory
sing this part with us? I need a rescue, my sin was heavy, the chains break down. Could you just respond to what you're feeling in the room right now? Come on, Jesus has moved into this place. And I just feel the Holy Ghost beginning to minister, begin to speak to situations right now. Come on, if you have a need, why don't you step into your aisle or come up here to the front? Come on, we will pray with you. A believer will join themselves with you. And I believe that God is going to step into your situation right now. Come on, if you need a deliverance, if you need a victory, if you need a healing, if you need God to touch your mind, if you need God to step in to where it seems like something has not moved in your life, I'm telling you right now that God is ready. God is willing. God is able. If you will give him an opportunity, his arm is not short. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, church, would you pray with us right now? Would you lift your voice? Would you stretch your hand toward those that have come up for prayer? Would you pray with somebody near you right now in the name of Jesus? Lord, you see every need, every sickness, every infirmity, every affliction. Lord, every family situation, Lord, that needs you to step in. God, tonight, today, Lord, we speak deliverance. We speak healing. We speak restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we take a authority and dominion over things that have bound us, things that have confused us, things that have deterred us. God, if we cast off the shackles of yesterday in the name of Jesus, we cast aside every weight, we lay aside every weight that has easily beset us. And in the name of Jesus, we speak the liberty and the freedom of the Holy Ghost right now to move, to minister, to speak, to loose in the name of Jesus. God, you're going to do it. You're anointed. He's going to destroy every yoke of bondage. You're going to set the captive free. Hey, I feel in the Holy Ghost that if you've been hungry to go to the next level with God, this is your day, and this is your moment right here. You ought to respond. You've been hungry, and you've been praying, God, I want to go further with you. God, I want to go further than I've ever been before. Right now is your moment of response. Just lift your hands in the air and begin to cry out the name Jesus. Just If you don't even know what to pray, just say Jesus, Jesus, and he will meet you right where 
beside him. There is none after him. And he is here today to minister to the body. I'm telling you, whatever you need from God, he's here to minister to you today. Come on, clap your hands if you believe that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. We have already prayed for so many needs in the house today. But I want to bring to you a special need that I want us to pray about corporately this morning. But if Jerry Burton is not here with us, and I don't know about you, but I can feel his absence today. I can feel his absence today. He's a man of God. He brings faith with him every time he comes here. And right now, the Burton family is hurting. They are going through a tough time. His, his brother, uh, brother Paul Burton, is sick with cancer, and they have only given him a few days to live. Uh, I'm going to pray with him after church today. I'm going to the house, uh, me and my family, and I'm going to pray with Paul. And what I want you to do right now is I want you to join me in prayer this morning. I want you to ask God to give this family peace, that he would give Paul strength, that he would not suffer, and that today, before I leave that house, that God would renew, refill, and I don't know if he's ever been filled or not, but if he hasn't, that God would fill him with the gift of the Holy Ghost before I leave that house today, because we want Paul to be ready. Amen? Amen. Come on, could you lift your hands and lift your voices and pray with me right now. God, we lift up the Burton family. God, you see everything they're going through. Lord, you see the pressure of the circumstance, the trial, Lord, that they are walking through together right now. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are mighty to save by many and by few. God, there is no infirmity of in diagnosis or disease, Lord, that is not subject to the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. Lord, and we plead your blood over Paul right now. God, and we speak virtue in his body. Lord, we speak strength in his body right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, give him virtue. Lord, God, when I step into that place, I pray you Give me authority and dominion uh, that everywhere my feet tread, uh, it would be just like Joshua. Uh, Lord, that you would go with me. Uh, and I pray you would send angels into that house today uh, to go before me uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and Lord, today there would be victory uh, in the Burton family. Uh, in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody say in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, would you clap your hands to the Lord? Praise God, praise God, praise God. And what a just awesome, awesome atmosphere we're enjoying here this morning. So glad that all of you are here today. Look around you. What a great crowd we have this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, we give you the glory. We give you the glory. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, while you're looking around... If you see somebody you don't know or see somebody that you haven't seen in a while, 
Why don't you just take a moment and go to them and greet them right now? Why don't we make everybody feel welcome in the house of the Lord? Amen? Let's take the next 60 seconds and let's greet one another. Praise God. Are you glad to be in God's house this morning? Amen. You may be seated. First of all, I just want to uh, say how happy I am to have my future son-in-law, Brother Bailey Irvin, a man in the house, and Sister Irvin, his mother, is here today, visiting all the way from Mississippi, where they plan to take my oldest daughter. We love them. We are so thrilled that they are here with us today. Please make them feel welcome. And also, I want to thank everybody who came out yesterday and helped us work on the house next door. We had almost 20 people here today, I believe, or yesterday, and they got so much done. They were here for seven, eight hours working all day. And that house is almost completely done and finished and ready to rent. So let's give them an awesome, awesome applause of appreciation for giving up their Saturday and helping us with that. Uh, I want to remind all of you that, and it's coming up quick, on July the 5th is our community freedom party that we're having in the parking lot from 6 to 9 p.m., We're going to do some outreach into the community, let people come and and eat some food and play some games, reach out to their kids, love on these families that live right here around the church. Who's excited about that? Amen. And having to do with that, uh, last week we had a meeting to plan that. And there will be a follow-up meeting today in the chapel. Sister Hammond is going to be leading that meeting for me. She has all the notes with all the uh, assignments and different duties that we had kind of split up. So if you are on the event squad, please meet quickly in the chapel right after dismissal. Uh, Last announcement that I have for you is on July the 2nd, we begin our four weeks of fire. And we are going to have four weeks of revival back to back to back. And brothers, brother and sister Seth and Angela Moore are going to kick us off on July the 2nd. That's a Sunday. They are the associate pastors at CLC in Heath for Brother Enzi, brother and sister Enzi. And man, let me just tell you, the man is a preacher. 
So you just better get ready. And if you know anybody that needs the Holy Ghost, you need know somebody that needs a healing, you know somebody that needs a deliverance, you need to start inviting them to these services in July. If you've been waiting for the right time to invite somebody, this is the right time. Invite them because we are having revival in the month of July. Praise God. Would you stand with me this morning? We're getting ready to continue our worship with the receiving of tithes and offerings. How many of you are glad that you're a giver? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's pray together. Jesus, we love you. Lord, we're so thankful to be in your house. Thankful for every gift and every giver. Lord, I pray right now that you would release blessing favor and increase upon every tither, upon every giver. God, I pray that you would release financial miracles into their life today. God, I pray that where the devourer has come in, that the Spirit of the Lord would raise up a standard against him and you would rebuke the devourer out of our lives. And there would be increase and multiplication for the furtherance of the kingdom of God and the glory of your name Jesus. Come on, can we give the Lord a great big hand, clap of praise? Amen. You can give this morning in many different ways. We have baskets here in the front. We have envelopes on the back of the wall. There's envelopes right here on this wall. And you can give by way of check or cash. Or you can go to our website, greaterfaith.church, and you can give through the website electronically. Or we have a QR code that you can scan right there on the screen. And that will take you to a place where you can give safely, electronically. Are you ready to give? All right. Let's give and worship in Jesus' name. Oh, 
Praise the Lord. Forgive me for making you do Calvary calisthenics today. But I told Ben to seat you because I, I got confused with my own schedule. I thought we had one more song, so I was letting you sit down. But if you'll stand with me. For just a moment, for the reading of the word, please forgive me. We're going to read Luke chapter 19, verses 43 and 44. And then I'll let you be seated. And Brother Derek, I'm going to add a couple scriptures for later. Luke chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. But we're going to start out with Luke 19. Verses 43 through 44. If you have it, say amen. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee. Anybody ever feel surrounded? And compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. And I want you to really pay attention to this last phrase here because it's where I'm drawing this thought from this morning. Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Hallelujah. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we love you. Lord, we're so thankful. Thankful for your word that speaks into our lives every day. Lord, thankful for the moving of your spirit in this service here this morning. Lord, I pray that right now, Lord, if there is any hindrance in our lives, Lord, anything that would cause us to not receive or hear the word this morning, that we would lay it down right now and you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Lord, I thank you for your love and your mercy that is ministering in our midst today. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise as you're seated. Praise God. Look at your neighbor. Tell him you got to know what time it is. You got to know what time it is. And I'll tell you what time it is this morning, and I'd like to dismiss. Uh, boy, I'm, I'm just not not firing on all cylinders this morning. Sunday school, you're dismissed. Thank you. It's time for a visit. It's time for a visit. I remember growing up, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, for the majority of my childhood. And we lived in a little apartment complex called Pleasant Run Apartments. And 
we had a really fun childhood. We didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have two nickels to rub together, but we had fun. We knew how to have fun. And I remember almost every day during the summer, somebody would come knock on the door. And this is how I grew up. My friends would come knock on the door and they'd say, hey, can you come play outside? Anybody grow up like that? Can you come play outside? I remember when Nintendos came out. I hated Nintendo at first because when Nintendos came out, people stopped knocking on the door. That literally, I have a vivid memory of the door knocks stopping once my friends started playing video games. The visits stopped. And then, as you progress through time to where we are now, it's almost awkward to get an unannounced visit now. Who's at the door? My God, I don't know. We haven't opened it in years. Nobody called and said they were coming. Who would just come visit us without giving us an advanced notice? Mm. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord has good manners. And He always sends an announcement of His arrival before He shows up for a visit. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Whoa. Did I give you enough time to get Luke chapter 3? Let's go to Luke chapter 3, beginning with verse 3. And he came, this is talking of John the Baptist, and he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made Smooth, verse 6, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. I have learned that when God plans to show up in a situation in my life, one of three things happens first. I either receive a word from God. How many of you have ever been praying or reading the word and you felt like God quickened you and spoke something into your spirit about something you've been dealing with? Amen. That's God sending a word to you. That's God sending an announcement to you about something he plans to do. It's important how you respond to his announcement. When God sends you an announcement and you are reading your word and God says, hey, I'm getting ready to move in that situation, that's your moment to confirm to him that he is welcome for a visit. When God says, hey, I'm getting ready to show up and do a work in the life of somebody you've been praying for, that's your moment to say, amen. God, I'm believing to see what this announcement says. I am believing that you're going to do what you are announcing to my spirit right now. Hallelujah. You ever sent somebody a text message and they didn't respond? Rude. And then you see them in person, right? And then it's that awkward moment. 
because they didn't respond, right? And they know they didn't respond. And so you get the excuse, right? Oh, man, I meant to. Man, I'm so sorry. On my phone, I'm having problems with my phone. We've all heard that one, right? Why are they apologizing? Because you showed up even though they didn't respond. And I'm glad to tell you today that even when our response isn't perfect, he is faithful to his word. So if he said he's going to show up, if even if you didn't get it quite right, you can expect for him to show up. And when he shows up, rather than giving an excuse, why don't you just give him a welcome and say, I'm so glad you're here. I've been waiting for the day that you would arrive, that you would show up in this situation. I'm so glad. That you're a prayer answering God. Sometimes he will send a word through his word or in prayer. Or sometimes he will send a man of God or a lady of God to speak to you. Have you ever been prayed for in an altar and somebody gave you a word? Amen. He will either send his word while you're reading or while you're praying, or he will send his man to deliver the word to you. Have you ever given somebody a word and you could tell they were struggling to receive that word? They just kind of looked at you like, man, I wish I could believe it. I want to believe it, but I'm not sure I believe it. They got that whole, I'll believe it when I see it kind of attitude. And that's not an indictment on anybody because we've all been through life and we've all been through pain and we've all walked through valleys. And sometimes our experiences bruise our faith and damage our belief. And that's why God is so amazing, because even when he sends me a man to give me a word, and my response isn't what it should be, his word never, ever returns void. It will accomplish what it's sent forth to do. I'm going to challenge some of you on this next one. But I'm just crazy enough to believe that everything in this book is true. That's just me. And when I read the story of Cornelius, God sent him an angel to give him a word. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. And I want you to hear your pastor today. And if I'm not your pastor, then I want you to hear this preacher today. God has dispatched an angel in this city. And I'm telling you right now, he is going from house to house. He is going to the homes of every estranged, cut off, confused, disgruntled believer that is in this region. And he is telling them, you better get ready because God is getting ready to show up in your life. I'm telling you right now, sometimes he sends a word, sometimes he sends a man, and sometimes he sends an angel. I don't know what God has sent into your life, but I do know this, that if you need him, and you will tune your ear to him, he will send you a word right when you need it. Hallelujah. That's why he sent John the Baptist. Because sometimes we've got to prepare before the word shows up. Sometimes God sends an announcement. What? Here it is. Watch. Why do we get upset when people show up at the door without calling? We're not ready. 
My God, there's laundry on the couch. Nobody's cleaned the bathroom this week. Come on, that's real life, right? We haven't got to the store yet. I got no refreshments to offer. No preparations have been made. So God sends a word in advance. And he says, get ready, because a miracle's coming your way, Sister Hammond. He said, get ready, because a miracle's coming to your family. He said, get ready, because the answer you've been asking for is in route. This is your space of grace to make a preparation for the miracle that is on the way. December of last year, I was seeking the Lord about 2023. I felt like the Lord spoke three things to me about this year. One of them I've preached to you already. I talked to you about a resurgence in the church, and it's already started to happen. But something else that the Lord spoke to my spirit, He said, 2023 is going to be the year of visitation. Does anybody know what that means? That means God's getting ready to show up. What do you mean, Brother Benny? I mean in situations that you have prayed about for years. Family members where it has grieved you for years that they weren't in this house. Problems that have vexed your mind and vexed the landscape of your life. Here's your announcement. God is getting ready to show up in your situation. So you better start making preparation for the miracle that is on the way. I'm telling you right now, there are strongholds uh, that God uh, is going to deliver you from uh, this year. Uh, There are miracles uh, that God is going to do this year. Hallelujah. I want to read to you just a little excerpt from a longer story in Genesis chapter 21. Verses 1 and 2. This is the Lord releasing an announcement into the life of Sarah. Now, this is amazing. This is Abraham's wife, Sarah, who is much, much older, past the time of childbearing. Past the time where she should expect something to happen. I've served God long enough, Brother Dwight, to know that God shows up so many times past the point where we think he should or we thought he would. And I am convinced that it's so that he and he alone can get the glory and the honor and the praise. Let's read this together. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. He had already sent the announcement. Mm, Hallelujah. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Mm. Our God makes good on his promises. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Does anybody know what Sarah did when she received the announcement? She laughed. God, I'm too old. What are you talking about? Return to sender. This came to the wrong address. What do you mean, God? I'm barren. I'm older in years. There's no way. 
What do you mean, God? God, I, I hear Pastor preaching right now, but <laughs> he don't even know how bad the situation is. This thing's way too far gone. It's way beyond fixing. It's way beyond rectifying. It's way beyond turning around. This is a desert place. This is a barren season. It's well beyond the reach of the miraculous. And God is saying, Sister Benita, you hold on to the announcement because I'm going to do exactly what I said I would do. He is not a man that he should lie. If God said it, he will do it. And let me tell you something. When God pays a visit, everything changes. When man pays a visit, it may cheer you up. It may encourage you. But when God shows up, things change. Mountains move. Valleys close. Seas split apart. Miracles happen when God shows up in your situation. There's a lady from our church in Columbus that we used to attend. Her name is Sister Laura Hamill. And years ago, Sister Laura was barren. And we had a, a prophet by the, by the name of Eli Hernandez preaching a revival. Does anybody know who Eli Hernandez was? Anybody ever heard of him before? Nobody? He had come and preached a revival in our church, and he was walking down an aisle, and he walked right by Sister Hamill, and he looked at her, and he said, God's getting ready to answer your prayer. And the doctor had told her there was no way she would ever have a child. Me and Sister Jennifer were youth pastors at Calvary in Columbus for 10 years. And we went to the graduation parties of every single one of her children. Because when God shows up, barren wombs begin to produce. When God shows up, springs come up in the desert. When God shows up, there is no impossibility that can stand in the way of Jesus. I'm telling you right now, I'm trying to convince somebody. I'm trying, I'm trying to compel somebody here this morning to believe that your situation is not beyond the reach of God, and he's getting ready to pay a visit. Hallelujah. Dear friend of mine, and I'll be able to tell you these names later, but a dear friend of mine called me yesterday, and he said, Vinny, do you remember what you spoke to me and my wife over and over last year. I said, I sure do. He said, well, it finally happened. See, just about three years ago, a close friend of ours, younger couple, she had gotten pregnant and had a miscarriage. And the doctor told her, don't do this again. Don't try this again. You can't have children. Oh, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost. And a few weeks ago, she felt something different in her body. And she went to the doctor. And the doctor said, guess what? You're pregnant and you're fine. And the baby's fine. And you can expect a healthy, full delivery, full recovery. Why? Because a word went forth. And when a word goes forth, God will show up to meet that word and see it through to fulfillment. Brother Brandon, words have been released into your life, into your family, and the boy, you can write it down. Habakkuk said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables. What's that mean, Brother Benny? That means if God gives you a word, you ought to write it down, because the day is coming. The day is coming when that word will be fulfilled.
Just one week ago today, God started moving in families in this church. Ah. I'm not going to share people's business, but the day after Father's Day, I got multiple text messages from families whose kids had not been in service in a long time. Some of which had come to this altar and prayed. And God moved upon them last week. Let me tell you something. That was an answer to prayers that had been prayed for years. And you better believe this. God is a finisher. So just because you may not see some of them today, does not mean you will not see them again. Because a word was put in their spirit. And now God has begun a work in their life. Everything changes when God shows up. Uh, it can change in a personal situation. It can change in a congregation. And it can change in a city. And y'all started marching around here today. You haven't been here before. You're thinking, man, why do they do that? Let me tell you what spirit came on them today. Mm. It was a Jericho victory spirit that came on them today. Because there's people in this room right now under the sound of my voice that have been believing God for a city-wide, a region-wide, a county-wide revival for a long time. And let me tell you why y'all, be you may not have even thought of it, but the reason your feet began to move and you begin to walk in circles is because you sent something beginning to crumble that has stood in the way for a long time. You begin to sense that there were walls that have opposed you for generations that are beginning to fracture. I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost today that Jesus is getting ready to visit this city. That Jesus is going to visit this county. Jesus is going to visit your home, your family, your issue, your situation. And he is going to do a miracle in your life. Thank you, Brother Dwight. God is about to visit the barrenness of his church. And open the womb of his bride to produce like never before. In the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. All Flesh. Oh, but you don't you don't know him. I may not know them by name, but I know his name and I know his word. And if it says all flesh, it means all flesh. I had the the joy of preaching junior high camp this year out at Buckeye Lake and we had just around two hundred and twenty, I think junior high campers that were there this week. And on Wednesday night, God filled 13 of them with the gift of the Holy Ghost in a span of about five minutes. Why are you saying that? I'm saying that to say this. 
that that chapel we have over there isn't just a chapel. It's a multi-purpose room. See, because there's going to be a youth group that gathers in there with a whole bunch of Holy Ghost-filled teenagers that are on fire for God, that are doing Bible studies in their school, that are witnessing to their friends. There's Sunday school rooms downstairs that are going to be full of joy and laughter and learning. Why? Because God's visiting the city. God's walking down the street and he's pooing on families and he's knocking on doors and he is declaring in this territory there will be a church. There will be a wellspring of life. This will be a place where I pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. There's going to be a visitation in your ministry. You know what I see when I look out in this congregation right now? I see dormant ministries. Man, I'm telling you, I've, I got so much clarity in the Holy Ghost right now, it's not even funny. I can look down every single one of these rows, and it's like God is just showing me things that have been sitting dusty on the shelf of your life that He never intended to stay there. Let me tell you something right now. If you'll make the preparation, you'll experience the visitation. God's going to show up, and there's going to be a visitation in your ministry. God did not create you to be idle, but He created you to be fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply. There's going to be a visitation in your finances. Oh, is he a prosperity preacher? Yep. Because I don't believe in being a penny costal. Uh oh, just bumped up right against the stronghold right here. But let me tell you something. I don't ever back down from it. I'm not afraid of strongholds. I'm not afraid of things that are in our minds, in our city, in our culture, or in our families that hold us back. Because when you release the kingdom of God in your life, you're saying, God, I want you to move in every area of my understanding, every area of my faith, every area of my expectation, every area of my spirit. I prophesy their will. There will be a visitation in the finances of the kingdom of God that will bless you for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. You know, when God blesses us financially, it's not so I can just raise my standard of living, but it's so I can raise my standard of giving. I've seen the bottom of my bank account many, many times. But let me tell you something. I don't serve God like this. I serve God like this with an open hand. And he just, he shall supply all, all, all your needs according to his riches and glory. I'm not afraid of any recession or any financial downturn in our economy. You know why? Because I know Jehovah. But Tyra, my provider, and he is not restricted or relegated by the circumstance of our world. When God visits your finance, you will be provided for. It's going to be a visitation in your influence. You know what God put in my spirit here just a few moments ago? He said, tell them to get ready for God moments. Ah. You know what a God moment is, Brother Blankenship? 
God's going to put people, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost say, I'm prophesying to you. God's going to put men of great influence in your path. And he's going to open the door of conversation for you to begin to speak to them. One God, Jesus name, baptism, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. I see tethers from your life into the lives of men of influence in this community. You better get ready because God is getting ready ready to visit your influence. He's going to create God moments for you to speak up and be bold and tell people what God is doing in your city. Hallelujah. There's going to be a visitation and this has already started in the lives of backsliders. There are people, you hear me right now. Is that the camera that's looking at me? I'm talking to every person online that's watching from a distance that isn't here because you've been too afraid to come back. You've had questions in your mind of whether or not you could come back. I'm telling you right now, come home. Come home. Come home. I know the Lord's been knocking on your heart. I know he's been speaking to you. I know he's been reaching for you. I'm telling you right now that the Father's house is open. And he wants you uh, to come home in Jesus' name. Uh, I've mentioned this to you before. I know many of you already know. When Paul came to Ephesus, it shook up the entire economy of that city. Greed and corruption were no longer able to profit on idolatry. And the Bible says... You know, that should be at the front of a lot more of your sentences. Well, they said, well, she said, well, he said, well, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about it? Hey, I love you, but what you have to say about it is not as important to me as what he has to say about it. And the Bible says it created no small stir in that city. Honey, you better buckle up because God's shaking things up in this hour. Why? Because he's getting ready for the greatest visitation that the world has ever seen. It is the day of the latter rain. Mm, hallelujah. I'm going to close with this illustration. It was uh, a few months ago, probably a little longer than that, I was on my way to fly somewhere, and I was sitting in the airport waiting on my plane, and I was, uh, it was all day travel, and I had to preach the same night, and I was going, I was going to California, I was on my way to the West Coast, that's where I was, and I was sitting in the San Francisco airport waiting to get on a smaller plane to go somewhere else, and, and I had to preach in just a few hours, and I was really excited about what the Lord had put in my spirit, and so I wanted to focus. And I was, I was sitting there at the gate, uh, just kind of looking over some notes and 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 getting in the Word, and uh, just trying to hear from God. And and you know what I did? Does anybody here have like earbuds or AirPods or noise canceling headphones? Yeah. Let me tell. Let me just give you a pro tip here. If you're waiting on a plane. Don't put on noise-canceling headphones. Just take it from a veteran, okay? It's not a good idea. Because I was sitting about this far from the door I was supposed to walk through to get on the plane. And I was completely engrossed with my notes and my study and had my noise-canceling AirPods on. And my phone was sitting on the padded seat next to me on vibrate. A lot of good that did me. 
And as I'm studying, as I'm reading, as I'm just getting super excited, I look up just in time to see them close the door to the jet bridge. I thought, my God, where did the time go? I've been sitting there for an hour. Felt like five minutes. I picked up my phone. Had all these missed messages from United Airlines. The guy at the counter, 10 feet from me, called my phone to try to get my attention. What are you trying to say, Brother Benny? I'm trying to tell you that you can get caught up doing good stuff. You can get caught. I got the spirit of Brother Dwight on me today. Hallelujah. You can get caught up doing good things, but you can be so engrossed and busy that you miss the announcement. And that door is open. And they're waiting and they're calling and they're looking. Would you stand with me? They close that door, and if you don't know anything about air travel, when they close the door to the jet bridge, they will not open it. Period. I ran, Brother Dwight, to the car rental station, rented a car, drove way faster than I'm supposed to drive. For hours, and we got there about five minutes before church. I got to where I was going, but I paid a price I didn't need to pay. I made it harder on myself because I wasn't tuned in to the announcement. And I feel the Lord speaking to us today, saying, Hey, Turn the noise canceling off. Lay the weights down. Move aside your distraction. Because I'm getting ready to pay you a visit. I'm getting ready to show up. And I don't want you to be caught off guard. I want you to be ready. Because I'm already on the way. Brother Cole, I'm glad you're here. I don't want to embarrass you, but I'm really good at doing stuff like that. I'm so glad you're here. But God has only just begun what He's going to do in your life. Mm. I'm so glad you're here. I was looking forward to seeing you again. But let me tell you something. You're not a visitor. You're part of the family. Mm. And God's getting ready to show up in your life. Hey, there's things you've been asking God for. I'm talking to you. There's things you've been asking God for. I'm telling you right now, huh? God's going to answer those prayers. He is. There's prayers you've prayed under your breath in passing behind the wheel of your car that nobody else heard, but God heard it. And God is going to move in that situation. How many of you have something? some area, some person in your life today that you need God to pay a visit to. If that's you, I'm going to invite you to just step out of your row and into your aisle or you can come up to the front. But I just, I, what I'm inviting you to do is to respond to the announcement. 
You can come up here. You can step in your row. You could just go and stand with somebody else and pray with them. Uh, but do something. Take somebody by the hand. Uh, get near somebody else. Do something to respond to the announcement that God has released into your life today. And if you are ready. Hear me. I got one more thing I'm going to say. Sometimes we don't know to expect until somebody alerts us to expect. God had to tell Sarah, you are living without expectation right now. But you need to change your mindset and convert it into expectation because nothing's going to happen with the mindset you have right now. You need to start expecting. And it's real comfortable to live without expectation because you can't be disappointed. But some of you need to shake off past disappointments and say, God, I'm ready to grab a hold of expectation in my life because I believe what Pastor preached today and I'm going to be looking for your visitation. I am looking for your arrival. If you want that in your life, would you just raise your hands right now. Would you just close your eyes and begin to pray. Begin to cry out to God. Let the Spirit of the Lord move on you. Let God begin to minister to you. Let expectation begin to show up in your spirit right now. Come on, church, let's pray one for another. Thank you.